Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to present my work uh, as, PhD, my, as PhD thesis that I did at the University of Massachusetts, Boston, uh, as deep learning based scene and object recognition in machine and human visual system. Thank you for having me here. Uh, understanding object recognition is a focus of many research, uh, like uh, core object recognition concepts, which analyze how uh, human rapidly identify the objects uh, despite substantial appearance variation. For example, in this picture, you can see we uh, can effortlessly detect and identify objects among thousands or tens of possibilities. Uh, it's uh, out of the scope of this talk to uh, analyze uh, the neural representation of how human eyes take uh, retinal image and uh, report the identity of objects presented in that scene. But we, I'm most interested to introduce uh, some conceptual um, uh, concepts that are uh, uh, actually uh, based on evidence uh, in many research have been achieved. One of the uh, line of evidence that I want to introduce is that human uh, usually um, for object recognition samples a large amount of information from center of the gaze uh, with increasing uh, uh, sparse sampling into the periphery. Uh, it means we filter high uh, special frequencies uh, uh, from into the periphery, which is undesirable because it slows down the, pro uh, the process of object recognition. Uh, <coughs> the second line of evidence is uh, contextual information plays an important role in object recognition. I can show you in uh, example how this uh, contextual information is important. For example, and uh, can you guess uh, what this object could be? Um, it's hard to say. Uh, let's try another object with different aspect ratio. Um, it's uh, still um, very hard to understand. And this one is uh, much harder due to the, its uh, scale. But if we have the original image that we have the object from this scene, you can see that we can detect uh, the objects easily because of the contextual information we have. For example, this one is car, this one is dog, and this one is human. The third uh, uh, line of evidence is that human visual system contains multiple frequency channels, and each channel is uh, uh, sensitive to different narrow uh, range of frequency. Uh, for example, in real world, we can see this uh, as images that have been taken in different distances. For example, it, uh, for uh, this image here, uh, if you uh, upsample this to the size of this one, so we will have low resolution image. And uh, human eyes can actually uh, analyze all of these sequence of uh, um, images in its own specific channel. Uh, so, inspiring by uh, multiple special frequency channels of human visual system, uh, we are going to see uh, to deploy multi-resolution object recognition network. And the motivation for this is that we know that uh, most of machine vision systems are usually trained and tested on high quality images. So, uh, the question is how do deep neural networks perform for different special frequency? Uh, here I'm going to show you uh, the performance of one of the object recognition system uh, in presence of uh, images in different, with different resolutions. Uh, I have chosen uh, faster RCNN, which is uh, one of the state-of-the-art uh, uh, object recognition networks. Uh, here we have an uh, original uh, image. Uh, we have uh, actually filtered the high special frequency noise. Uh, with the Gaussian filter, and you can see the performance of uh, deep neural network. If we decrease the resolution of the image, uh, based on the degree of resolution, we can see the performance of uh, deep network how changed. For example, if I decrease the um, resolution, uh, the performance drops, and if we keep going and decrease the resolution of the image, 
the performance of the network drops significantly. However, in this image for human, it's easy to understand the objects and identify them, but for the uh, deep network, uh, actually the performance is almost zero. The um, solution uh, we have for uh, having multi-resolution object recognition is using the human multi-channel uh, frequency level, uh, frequency channels. So we are going to train different networks in different frequency channels. For this, we can have uh, actually a 2D Gaussian filter applied to uh, any data set we have and create different resolutions and train our network in different, fine tune our uh, original network in different resolutions. And uh, here uh, I systematically uh, divided the range of uh, frequency to five different uh, frequency, cutoff frequencies, the, and I created the five different models here. The value you see uh, next to each model shows a fraction of highest frequency represented uh, for filtering the uh, original image. And uh, as you can see here, uh, the, uh, um, uh, first of all, I would like to show the results and then I will back to this. So um, I would like to show a um, performance of each individual networks here. This is the performance of the full model, original model we have. And uh, the uh, horizontal uh, axis shows the resolution and uh, the uh, vertical uh, axis shows the performance of the faster RCNN in terms of mean average perception. So, uh, Let's go to the next one, 20 over 20 model is a model that we have uh, uh, removed the noise. Uh, as you can see, this model is uh, outperformed the original model due to removing the noise. But the interesting uh, point is that 18 over 20, which is a little low resolution image, the performance is uh, uh, very similar to 20 over 20 model, but even better in low, uh, low spatial frequencies. And the next one is 10 over 20, and I go to the last one is 5 over 20. The interesting point is that uh, the models that have been trained in low resolution shows a, a actually good performance in low spatial frequencies. Now the question is how we can combine all of these models together to have a single model uh, that uh, be uh, actually uh, robust to the uh, resolution of the input image. Uh, I would like to back to the previous slides. Uh, I showed this uh, interesting uh, uh, example we have. Uh, this is an example that full model and 20 over 20 model cannot detect the second person. But the models that have been trained in lower resolution can detect this, actually, the second uh, person here, which is, shows how uh, sometimes the performance of lo low resolution email will increase. And for combining these, uh, we have uh, actually uh, different methods to combine these single models. I use a, um, a method that can be, in general, be used for any object recognition networks. We can have a, get uh, actually train all of these models, uh, individual models, and get the final object and eliminate the background prediction for each model. And then we can group the object by their class, sort them by their probability, and apply class based on maximum suppression. In that case, uh, actually, it's a trade-off between a little of the speed but uh, the performance, I will show you how the performance would work. The green uh, curve you can see here uh, shows the um, performance of the ensemble model that ought to perform all of the single models, especially the full models. We have actually significant improvement in low frequencies, about 20%, and about 5 to 8% in high frequencies. However, uh, we can have uh, another ways uh, specifically for uh, faster RCNN to combine this model, which is more computationally efficient. In faster RCNN, we have uh, actually uh, two networks, uh, region proposal networks here. In region proposal networks, we propose some anchors that give us possibility of um, some, uh, give us some anchors that shows possible objects to us. 
In these anchors have been defined based on scale and ratio of possible objects that have actually we uh, get it from uh, 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 feature maps that we have from the network. We can add uh, resolution anchors here and add it to the anchors we have here. So we train after this together. So it's more efficient for the actually for training, uh, but it's just specifically for faster RCNN. Uh, this uh, multi-resolution uh, uh, network that I uh, introduced you has uh, lots of application in almost any computer vision problems. Uh, for example, in safe driving cars uh, that have to uh, analyze the uh, images in different distance or for robotics that uh, they moving, they take the objects or take the images in, uh, when they are moving or uh, for uh, cloud-based computing that sometimes they need uh, to have compressed image with different resolutions. The next uh, interesting uh, concepts that I would like to uh, introduce uh, that uh, uh, we inspired by the human uh, object recognition process is um, based on this, that despite uh, recent advances in deep learning uh, based object recognition, the human um, efficiency for object recognition is unparalleled. Uh, the reason for this is that human uh, uh, actually do object recognition so efficiently due to using t uh, two um, uh, techniques. One of them is extracting uh, the global scene properties and the second one is the scene grammar. I will introduce each of these concepts and show you how we can use those for deep learning networks. Um, First, introduce what are global scene properties. When we are uh, working with deep, learn deep learning networks, we usually introduce the basic level categorization. For, for example, in this picture, we say this is waterfall. But uh, on the other hand, we can have uh, the global properties or superordinate level categorization. So they express a scene using uh, high level, special, uh, and functional aspects of a scene. For example, they talk about structure of a scene, they talk about uh, uh, express the content and constantly, like the temperature, transient, and navigability, uh, natural or man made of this picture. For example, th in this picture shows waterfall, but in two different seasons. And we have to say about the temperature, transient, and uh, its uh, navigability. Uh, I apologize for this. I uh, actually updated the uh, uh, slides, but it seems uh, uh, it's not here. So I have to skip this. OK. So. Um, in uh, considering the concept of global properties, we know that neural uh, signals distinguish uh, both basic level categorization and global properties of a scene in 100 milliseconds. So it's amazing that we can actually get gist of the scene in uh, just a uh, blink of eye. So, um, but how about in deep learning network? Can we have, the question is, can we have a, a, a both uh, basic level categorization and global properties at this parallel pathway. Um, to answer this question, we actually did uh, some experiment. <coughs> and we extracted the, uh, 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 we actually, we did uh, one uh, experiment, but we asked subjects to, um, uh, to rate this, uh, the global properties of this scene uh, and give a rate for that. For example, one of the global properties we are talking about it is, uh, is this scene natural or man-made? Is this closed or open? And we asked them to rate it, is it more ma natural or more man-made? And based on the subjective uh, ranking uh, score we actually computed, we did a uh, we did a linear regression to find the ground, strong ground truths. It means uh, we remove the picture. We, we are not sure they are based on the uh, um, subject um, ranking. We, we are not sure they are open or closed. Uh, but we strongly, for some pictures, we know they are highly closed or highly uh, um, uh, uh, open. Uh, and uh, based on this strong ground truths we have, we feed those uh, images to uh, convolutional networks. For example, one of the state-of-the-art state networks for uh, scene perception is uh, Pascal VOC. 
um, that had been created on VGG16, uh, we applied those images to this network and we extracted the features from different layers of the convolutional layers. And we used support vector machine to categorize those images based on their global properties. For example, here based on they are open or closed uh, or they are natural or man-made. Uh, and we repeated this process in different spatial frequency. For example, for low spatial frequency, for high spatial frequency, and for full spectrum. The results uh, are consistent in all uh, spatial frequencies, and it shows that um, the first layer of the convolutional networks shows the highest performance and is very suitable for extracting global properties. So, um, and this is a consistent with human visual system that we get the gist of the scene before segmentation and grouping. And uh, I would like to back my, uh, go to uh, my previous slides and show this interesting result. Uh, as I said, uh, the human, uh, first of all, start to uh, get a gist of the scene and then start to uh, do object recognition and segmentation. But let's see what happened in uh, deep neural networks. As you can see here, we have extracted some class-specific activation map. In this uh, activation map shows the discriminative regions of a scene that lead to a specific categorization. For example, in this scene, uh, we have a part here that this part uh, lead to uh, this result that we actually categorize this scene as a kitchen. And uh, if I actually uh, add another object here, uh, the result of uh, actually this activation shows the discriminative regions of uh, this scene has been changed to this uh, object that I have added here and changed the results of the um, prediction to shower. Uh, so it says that, uh, and also another uh, experiment shows that object uh, detect, uh, detectors emerge in the last layers of convolutional neural network. So it's against what we do, the top-down process in human visual system, that we first try to get gist of the scene and then start to do object recognition. And um, I uh, actually, uh, um, go to the second uh, uh, line of, uh, actually second concept, which was uh, scene grammar. Uh, scene grammar uh, means we actually have learned the rule uh, uh, in the world, like we have learned the rule of um, our mother tongues. This uh, training is not explicit, but it's a kind of uh, uh, actually achieved by uh, constant communication and interaction with our environment. For example, we expect to see some, uh, uh, actually this glass, uh, we expect to ha have a surface to rest that shows this is a syntactic rule, but semantic rule is that this glass is consistent with this scene. How about here? This object is not consistent and is, uh, in terms of syntactic and semantic. So, uh, so we actually say that this scene violates syntactic and semantic rule and doesn't follow the grammar, the scene grammar. So our uh, objective is to see can, uh, uh, and uh, this scene grammar uh, helps human to guide their attention in real world Mm, since that make object recognition so efficient. Uh, we uh, actually uh, show this uh, evidence using the eye movement that we extracted uh, in our lab. So we ask the objects to look at the scene and say, uh, this is a task driven um, uh, actually task. So we ask uh, them to find inconsistent object in a scene. And we measure their eye movement. And um, as you can see here, uh, this is a binary fixation map and this is continuous fixation map. Uh, so we, first of all, the human take a gist of a scene uh, in just um, blink of eye and then try to use those stored information uh, and uh, f uh, to actually uh, create a, a consistent and typical uh, uh, objects that is compatible with those actually seen. For example, here you can see that 
that we have a dense fixation on this tap water. So after figuring out this could be a kitchen, so uh, actually a person is looking for a most significant or salient object here, that is, this is tap water. And our question here is that can deep neural uh, visual recognition network learn meaning meaningful contextual information in terms of consistently between elements of a scene and their arrangement? Uh, for this, we started to uh, use a database, a CGRAM, uh, that uh, actually they have a photograph of real world uh, uh, indoor scenes in two consistently conditioned. One is manipulated with inconsistent objects and other one has a consistent object. And um, we uh, did uh, eye movement experience and we asked the people to uh, find the inconsistent object in a scene. In some of scene we don't have inconsistent objects. And our objective was to create a baseline uh, and see how uh, scene grammar evolves in deep neural networks. Is it evolves or not? So for this, we uh, extracted class-specific saliency map from the last convolutional layer of the neural networks. And we are trying to see, is there any similarity between our eye movement and our uh, 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 saliency map? This, um, uh, Eye movement is the ground truth because it has been shown that some factors in eye movement, like number of fixation, frequency of, uh, and the duration of the fixation, shows um, a scene grammar is kind of um, uh, evidence that they are based on the scene grammar because we have tried to use those uh, uh, eye movement features to categorize scene based on. Uh, uh, they're uh, consistently or inconsistently. And uh, we did uh, too many actually uh, evaluation here. For example, we show uh, the similarity using different uh, metrics we have, for example, AUC. And as you can see here, there is uh, some, um, in this part, you can see we have dense fixation map in the area of uh, inconsistent objects. However, uh, we don't have uh, in our saliency map that we have extracted from last uh, convolutional layer, um, there is no uh, good correlation. As you can see, the value of AUC have decreased in this one. Um, this actually um, is not um, a complete research, but it uh, gives us a baseline how to start to work a scene grammar deep neural networks. I have a paper uh, um, uh, in this uh, actually regarding scene grammar, so please, if you are interested, just refer to that. So I go to um, um, conclusion and see what the take home message we have. Um, so, inspiring from mechanisms in the human visual system the performance of deep learning networks for object recognition and image uh, perception uh, with any resolution, specifically low resolution, can improve significantly. This method is simple, novel, and efficient. The second is that inspiring from human scene perception process, scene knowledge can be extracted and utilized more efficiently in terms of global properties, properties of a scene or scene grammar uh, to uh, make object recognition in different neural network uh, more efficient. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, may I have your questions?